Um, just as a point of recap, we had the Open Source and Gaming Day last week at the Open Source Summit North America. Um, had some really great, uh, you know, feedback on Open Match um, with some folks that were there. So that was really helpful and uh, very much appreciated. Anybody else want to add thoughts or share anything else cool that they've been working on? Uh, I guess I can give an update on like the, we, we have moved a lot of our infrastructure on top of open match and we've kind of deployed that and I can give like a kind of an update on some of the stuff we're seeing. Cool. Um, yeah, I don't, looks like there wasn't, um, anything added in the agenda directly. I know you guys had right. had some conversation in Slack about like, different proposals and stuff. So I didn't know if that had been resolved, um, but I figured that was a good thing to discuss if it was still an open issue. And then, yeah, Caleb, if you want to give a general update. And... Sure. Maybe it makes sense to talk briefly about open match at open source and uh, the open source summit. And then, um, and then, yeah, people can go around and give their, individual updates and then we can talk about some of the new issues and progress on dot seven. Sounds good to me. Great. Um, so I guess a couple of us went down for the open source and gaming at the Linux Foundation Open Source Summit. And we presented there at the um, open source and gaming kind of session. And there were a lot of um, really interesting talks. Um, on the overmatch side, the talk went really well, and we got a really like a large amount of discussion out of it actually at the end, which made it extra worth it, including a couple people who had a lot of experience um, in the industry. Um, there were some very fair, it, it was definitely worth it because we got a lot of perspective on kind of the needs of folks who are interested in like evaluating open match, which is it seems like there's a desire to have the, those samples, or at least the, the business logic out of the box. Um, so we should definitely take that as feedback. Um, however, right, um, what I was confirmed on was that there's entire teams staffed just solving this problem that Open Match is trying to solve, which is like the infrastructure, the concurrency, the availability of matchmaking. So um, the fact that entire teams are being staffed just to solve this problem right at, at these larger organizations is uh, I, I think a really good proof point for for where the project is and where it's headed so generally like really really positive um i don't know if scott you had much or april if you had much to add there uh that's a pretty good summary i think cool um i don't, I don't know if other than getting to like the specific notes that we took I, I don't know if there's much value in going through um other feedback we got out of that other than um, it seems like we're on the right track. Um, folks are learning that they have to bring some parts to the story. Um, but for folks that kind of have those parts, it seems like a like a good place to be. Yeah, I would just reiterate kind of the call for, you know, um, use cases. And so just that mm -hmm. that's really helpful to us. Um, that even if you're not yet using open match or just evaluating it, please, you know, file a issue or whatever, like let us know kind of what your use case is because that was huge, huge helpful feedback. So sweet. Cool. Um, I, I know Scott was uh, adding stuff to the agenda. Scott, do you want to talk about um, 0.7? Yes. Um, so 0 0.7, um, we've made a bunch of good progress. A lot of it has been on the development side, though. Um, so we've been working on the configuration and the Helm deployment of a match, uh, and then also on some like build stuff um, and like developer, like internal developer experience. Um, so that's been going well. Um, and the builds are faster, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then for externally visible things, uh, the really big one is that um, thanks to some feedback, um, the gRPC 
a lot of them are now streaming instead of just gRPC calls uh, because the gRPC calls have limits uh, that we didn't quite realize um, that are too low for a lot of open match workload. This is uh, the four megabyte limit? Yeah, the four megabyte limit. Okay. So in case uh, someone discovers it in this conversation that exists. Yes. Uh, so um, that I believe is all merged. Uh, and so that limit should be gone in 0 0.7. Uh, and then the other major thing um, we're hoping to land still is um, some other types of filters. Um, that's not quite in yet, but we have a plan for getting it in in kind of a temporary way, and then we can jiggle it on the inside to get it to a better state internally. Uh, but we want to try to get land that um, by 0.7, uh, which we plan on cutting end of next week, uh, and because that's like our six week uh, release train, we're going to cut it. And then we're going to um, start working on 0.8 right away. That's our current plan. Um, so those are, the, those are, I think, the major issues in here. There's a bunch of pull requests, but those are the two big externally visible things is the streaming and the filtering. Mm -hmm. On that note, there's actually there's there's several um, yes. kind of new proposal issues that have been cut on GitHub um, for the yeah. purposes of expanding um, the API, especially on the configuration side, mm -hmm. um, as well as it, some several enhancements on the filtering and also just the, the querying surface in general. Right. Um, so those are definitely open for discussion and comments. Welcome. Yes, um, I think those are unlikely to land in 0.7. Mm -hmm. Other than maybe the, oh, I guess the proposal for um, the um, tickets being, all tickets being returned if you don't specify any filters, which currently nothing gets returned. Because um, right. that one's pretty easy in the back end to implement. Um, but some of the other ones are a little more complicated, so mm -hmm. it's going to take a little longer. Oh, I just realized. Uh, we do we have um, for the built-in indexes like created. Um, we don't have uh, an issue for that. I, I, we should go uh, make one and then also invite everyone to to come participate on that one as well. I believe there's an issue on that. Yifan worked on this. Um, we've held off on doing it in point seven uh, because um, we had some discussion about how it should actually work. And we were hearing from people we're talking to that it was very easy for it to inject it themselves and mm -hmm. that um, they could inject a slightly better value to it. Um, so like, it was like, do you need it? Not really. And if you don't, then we can just, do, you know, it's one line of code of time.now or whatever. Um, so that wasn't a concern that we were hitting, so we're not prioritizing it, I think. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Any other dot seven? Is there a is there an up to date ongoing list of, I guess, features that have made it into dot seven, or is that just the commit history? Uh, currently, it is just the commit history. We don't have any like systematic way to generate release notes. Okay. Uh, the way we've been doing it is um, the <clears throat> person cutting the release candidate will go to GitHub and look at the pull pulls between when point six was branched and now, and then we'll figure out what the notes are from there. Uh, so I guess that'll be end of next week. We'll have some really concrete notes for 0.7 once we've already cut it. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything specific that we need help with testing? Uh, once 0.7 RC comes out, give it a spin, I guess. Okay. I didn't know if there was anything like specific that we wanted people to try and break or just uh, to use it uh, overall. I don't think so, just overall. 
Oh, the other thing we have been working on in 0.7 is scale testing, uh, but I have not been the one doing that, so I don't have the numbers. Uh, that was Sarab and he is out this week. Um, so I think going into 0.8, we'll have some more scale numbers uh, to share, but we don't have that today. And then we're going to use that to drive some discussion about um, how indexing works and how the internal like state store works. Uh, and then um, we're also, as, as just a heads up, probably going to discuss um, removing assignments from the API and building something next to OpenMatch that handles assignments, uh, just because we've had some feedback of some people just want the open match bit that doesn't have assignments. They just want to plumb tickets through and match them, and they have everything else. Uh, and then obviously a lot of other people want some assignments waiting workflow. Um, so that's vague. Uh, we expect to discuss it in point eight. Sweet. Uh, if an issue gets cut on that, I'd love to join on that discussion. Yeah, uh, an issue will be cut when I take them to do it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> point, eight, point eight timeline, not point seven timeline. Awesome. All right. Um, Caleb, yeah, do you want to talk about the update from Unity? Sure. Um, we have we the integration on dot six actually went really well. Um, kind of uncovered a few issues which we have loaded up onto to GitHub. I was mentioning those a few second a few minutes ago. Namely, the the API format around struct and how indexing works. Um, we'd love to hear. In this one, I kind of feel like a, a lonely voice a little bit because I, I think maybe like our use case isn't the same as like everyone's use case. So I'd love to hear more use cases for how folks intend to or would like the ticket API to look. Um, but besides that, we were able to totally integrate it into our backend and then deploy it. Um, and so we're actually running some some tests. I don't have the numbers today because we're still in the process of standing up all of our test infrastructure for testing, you know, the that that side of the house. But um, what we are seeing is we're seeing some really good flow through um, through Open Match, and it's actually pretty pretty quiet, which is nice. Um, we haven't, you know, we, we have our own issues to solve that haven't actually allowed us to to totally stress open match, which is a good sign. We have some very natural uh, headroom there. So really looking forward to the, the stress testing results on um, going in ending dot seven, going into dot eight. And of course, if there's anything um, like the ability to like run it or have instructions for running it, we would definitely be be down for for participating and getting more samples there. But besides that, yeah, the, the big outcome where we're just the um, possible breaking API changes for um, the, the ticket proto format around whether or not it's a document style API with custom index pathing, or um, if there's kind of a, a more of a blob binary API for, for talking directly to your match function. I suppose at some point there should be like a demo uh, that's like, hey, like we we deployed this thing on top of Overmatch. I demoed something at uh, Open Source Summit, but unfortunately, since then I have broken it. Uh, sad to say, <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, I would share my screen and 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 kind of like, look, I can click around my my Unity game, and behind the covers, it's Open Match. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be sure to have something fun like that for 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 next time. Yeah, you're just building the suspense. It's cool. Yeah, but it's great. Like, it's my MMO <laughs> RPG action something something game. <laughs> it's gorgeous. It has a menu and everything. To be clear, only has a menu. <laughs> I didn't say what the end everything was. Right? It also has like. <laughs> it also runs. That's pretty impressive. No, it's a, it's a cool demo. It, yeah. it demos the open match, but it doesn't demo any gameplay, which is reasonable. I, I guess, I guess, just to kind of be transparent about what the not what the joke is, but what was shown was um, we we hooked up um, a Unity game to a matchmaking system that was using Open Match as the the underlying infrastructure, 
And we simulated several players running and connecting and getting back IPs from a prototype function that was deployed. Um, this is through pulling the assignments API currently. And what was really happening behind the covers when you do the reveal is that we were actually running a like 1,000 concurrent client test where it's just clients constantly matchmaking and our average matchmaking time was something like you know, three seconds or 3.2 seconds. Um, and that's with like all these like knobs turned on to slow it down a little bit. So um, it felt it felt really good to show that and see some really good latency times through on the, the other APIs because we're averaging those as well. So, you know, 20 to 40 millisecond times on the, the delete and the get. Um, and then the create was something like, well, was like 80 millisecond average. So um, we have since tried scaling that. And for the most part, we see really good linear scale out of those APIs. Where things slow down is, you know, just um, the whole system has a tendency to, to churn. And so the synchronization context window will be really critical going forward. But that's where we want to get that sampling in from the stress tests. Because I think having that stress test packaged up for, for folks to go in and just do the readme and run it um, and then put their own function in the middle, it'll give us a ton of more information about, you know, um, what, how, how the intrinsics of that function affect, you know, the, the, the scalability of open match. So, cause folks will need to measure that, I think, as they, as we go. Sweet. Cool. Um, yeah. Did we run out of things on the agenda? We did. I was going to see if anybody else had anything they want to share. Jesse or Ish, anybody just want to talk about cool stuff? Oh. Do dogs have opinions? Uh, I can give a little update of kind of what we've done the last month or so. So uh, I upgraded. So I was on I was on dot four. I think prior to this meeting um, since last, and we uh, I got up to dot six when that came out and that was pretty seamless actually um it's pretty pretty straightforward which is great um and then i actually set up a listen server to run against our production uh matchmaking so it's essentially pulling down all of the real production data but then it just instead of sending the reservations out it just drops them on the floor um and that's actually I, i'm it's my fault for um finding the the four megabyte limit on grpc because um the synchronizer on the back end had too much to do and it died so um i have a pseudo listen server that just grabs like you know 20 players and like two servers and and runs that but it doesn't run the whole thing so um unfortunately this meeting is like a day early um, I just pulled master down from because the that um, that streaming change just went in uh, Monday or Friday I can't remember so I haven't actually um, I wrote the code but I haven't actually deployed all the new things and and run it but I'm hoping by the end of the week actually I'll have a a, a listen server against production which would be pretty cool um, and then plus one super stoked about the uh, attributes properties change. I think that just that issue just got created like a couple days ago with uh, um, I mean you guys are all familiar. So um, yeah, I think I think that's pretty cool. Um, we have just our personal use case. We just have like a ton of properties that go into the matchmaking function. So it's just like this ginormous struct of like 30 things that are just sort of jammed in there that you're constantly like turning into it. It's an int which we turn into a float 64 and then put into the struct. And then, uh, so it'll be kind of cool. I, I like the idea of just being able to have a struct and you just pass that in as binary and call it a day and just, you know, it's already there on the other side. Um, but that's just our personal use use case. Um, trying to think, I think that's kind of all the cool stuff. Um, pretty excited for the dot seven release. I think that's, there's good stuff in there. Great. And uh, I will say from like um, in the past, like dot two, dot three, dot four, each, Incremental change has been somewhat difficult to like upgrade, but it was really awesome. Like from I was on dot six RC and then going to just pulling off master yesterday, and it was like super, like almost seamless. Like a couple of the code changes and just everything works, which is really nice. Like the the breaking changes have been like yes breaking, but pretty straightforward and in like incrementally going from one to the next without having to change like the whole system and stuff, which has been. Um, which has been good. So amazing work, guys. That's that's been awesome. Um, just working with that stuff. Um, 
I think that's about it. Yeah. I've been, I've been super happy with the last, last month. It's been good stuff. Fantastic. That's awesome feedback. Um, on the doc stuff. Yeah. I uh, would love to hear more about, you know, or, or be it GitHub or just through the normal channels or, or ping, but yeah, I would love to hear some more thoughts on kind of like the structure that gets passed in and why the binary use case is, is like good or bad. Um, Cause I know that's been a, a constant debate um, on the, the steering committee side, it's just like, what do people want? What do they need? And we're kind of just like guessing. Um, so it's cool to have like a concrete example. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I said, that's just our specific use case. Like, I don't know how other people, um, but I'm, I don't, I don't know if we're necessarily alone in this, but like all players and servers go through our director, which I think isn't like, wasn't like the original plan. So I think, you know, like that's kind of different from what a lot of people are doing. So, you know, I don't know how well like our use case matches up with, with gotcha. what unity or, or whoever else or, or how they're using it. But sounds like a use case now for sure. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Uh, my dogs are done uh, getting their opinion. So anybody else have anything that you want to share or talk about before we call it for this time? Let's see, we're in August. We're coming up to September. I guess the next big thing, at least that's on the, well, there's all things open is happening in October. I know they have some gaming content, but not a ton, just a handful of sessions, I think. And then the next big one would be KubeCon in November. It's the week before Thanksgiving. And it is once again in San Diego because uh, I'm pretty sure San Diego like offered some sort of buy one, get one conference deal this year or something that I even saw there was another like random thing that I saw today, conference in San Diego. So I guess they uh, really marketed that hard this year. Um, but we're trying to get some time for, you know, some gaming content at KubeCon, um, especially since, you know, our projects are so close uh, to Kubernetes. Um, it kind of makes sense to, to have some folks there. Um, if you're interested to go, let me know. Um, just to KubeCon in general. Um, previously, I think it sold out last year, so I would encourage if you do want to go, you know, go soon. Um, and then the other one is hotels. They're also getting, you know, a little hectic. Um, so a lot of folks are booking now. Um, there's also Airbnb, things like that. So uh, KubeCon does tend to have eight to 10,000 people. Um, so it'll be a, it'll be a big one. Um, and so, yeah, we're just hoping to get some more time to talk about gaming stuff there. And then the next big thing after that would be good old GDC, um, which I'm sure there will be a lot of us uh, attending that and we'll look at doing something fun and also, you know, get a chance to get some more of that like networking and stuff like we had at the um, open source team gaming day last week. Um, a little bit easier to do in San Francisco since we already have space allocated. Um, but yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be nice to have everybody back together. Um, but if you know of any events or anything coming up uh, between now and then, let us know. We would love to, uh, you know, either have a presentation or just to have a little gathering around that. Um, as part of the open source and gaming day, um, Caleb and Throb had a great presentation that they did, um, but we also have another deck that's kind of like an overall overview of Open Match. Um, that that has now been stylized for the Open Match brand, and so that is like it looks really awesome, which is what happens when you have a professional do your slides. <laughs> um, and so, if you're interested in giving a talk about Open Match anywhere reach out and we're happy to share that with folks. Um, we'll help make sure it's updated to the latest version. Um, but we, you know, we're trying to build all this content that uh, other folks can use uh, for when you want to talk about OpenMatch. So very excited about that. 
And unless anybody's got anything else, we can probably wrap it up for this time and then uh, chat again in September or, you know, before then on the GitHubs. Yes. Um, please respond to proposals on GitHub. Um, uh, I will be doing that this week, I swear. Uh, <laughs> And uh, any feedback, and especially um, not is uh, not feedback of or feedback of we can solve it this way, or I think the solution is bad or good or whatever is good. But even just feedback of this is our use case, because then we can look at all the use cases and come up with solutions that um, fit those use cases. Yeah. Um, yes. So. Yeah, I will um, actually, you saying that made me think like I should, we do have an open match Twitter account. We are open underscore match because someone else randomly claimed open match years ago and I haven't been able to grab it yet. Um, but I'll, that's a good use case for Twitter is to just tweet out like, hey, here's this proposal, please review. Um, so that's just another way to get eyes on it. So um, we can do some of that and then however else, any, folks have suggestions for how we can get uh, more feedback on these. Yeah, the um, I guess an interesting note is it, it seems like, at least from the Slack and folks I've talked to, a lot of people are watching the project. Um, like a lot more than I was expecting are actively watching, but not actively participating. So um, that'll definitely be something that, that I would like to try and work on is just like trying to get involvement from around uh, just the community in general. Uh, the the Twitter thing is a very interesting idea. I'd like to like to try that out a couple times. Yeah, I expect all of you to retweet everything and like everything. <laughs> um, cool. Right. And you got any anything else? T-shirts. Yes. So I did find the box. <laughs> <laughs> Um, for if you did, if you missed the oh, and did you also all see what Mark was giggling about and his? Uh, so last week we had two things, our little private jokes that happened. Um, was trying to bring open match T-shirts to the event and went to our you know swag storage closet um, at the office and uh, the box was missing. Um, apparently, the team that managed that closet moved, um, so <laughs> they. They did move everything. Um, so found it, located, we'll get shirts out to people. Um, and then the other thing was around a new summit at GDC, which I would gladly put a link to in the notes, but I don't recall where the tab is. But that was something that Mark uh, Mandel, who is um, the lead on the Agones project had been uh, working on getting, you know, conversation about kind of this, um, you know, online gaming technology um, aspects at GDC. So that's a thing. So that's really exciting. Um, and we'll put a link in the working doc whenever I can find that link again. Um, so people can be aware because I, I know like GDC CFPs and everything I think are already opened or they're about to open. Yeah, I think they're, they open at like the end of the month. Okay, yeah. In a couple of days. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that's really exciting because it will be game technology that won't be too like engine focused. Uh, it'll be more uh, back end infrastructure. I think there is some room for like network technology for in games, but I'm not quite sure how they're going to play it. But open match and Nagona is definitely fit into that bucket. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I would say it. also, I would say also, like if you're thinking about submitting to GDC or um, would be interested to speak but don't quite want to take it on alone, that um, you know we can either start it. I've seen other projects will start a master doc of like every topic that someone's submitting to a conference, so everybody knows what's being submitted, and you don't you know kind of compete with each other. <clears throat> so we can do that if, if we think it's helpful, um, or even if it's just, you know, a handful of folks that are wanting to submit something, um, we can just kind of communicate, you know, via Slack or whatever about what people are submitting and who 
needs a co-speaker, things like that. But it would be great to have some open match talks there, but I know competition is, is kind of crazy. So we'll get in what we can. But I would expect um, at the very least to be something around open source and gaming, the IGDA SIG, um, they always get like a session slot um, at GDC. So at the very least, we'd have that to kind of, you know, talk about open source gaming and, and the specific projects. So, and before we know it, February will be here. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, um, we will keep in touch on the GitHub, Slack, all that good stuff. If anything comes up and then we'll see each other uh, virtually next month. Thanks, everybody, and have a good uh, rest of the Wednesday. All right, thanks a lot. Bye. Thanks, ladies. Bye.